In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a knowledge source of type SharePoint and OneDrive with your Copilot. Now, in order to understand what a knowledge source is, now a knowledge source is basically any information of your organization which you want it to be surfaced when someone queries in Copilot. So it is basically grounding your data. So what you are essentially doing is that instead of uh, exposing all the uh, internet related information uh, as a response to your on your copilot you would like that it is filtered down to a specific document or a specific content now in this case the content is sharepoint library now what it does is basically uh, this capability allows you to include sharepoint file as one of the knowledge source for copilot now remember this is only available for authenticated end users SharePoint site URL cannot be more than two levels of depth. Uh, only modern pages are supported compared to classic pages. Now, what are the steps to configure a uh, knowledge source uh, of SharePoint for Copilot is you may need to take help of Azure uh, website. Now in portal.azure.com, what you need to do is like you need to create an app registration, uh, generate a client secret, uh, configure app to redirect URI, add API permission, then grant the admin consent, and then navigate to Copilot setting security, and then copy the configuration information of client ID, secret, uh, scopes, uh, and then select the option authenticate manually. Okay, so once you do all this thing, uh, your site, uh, your uh, SharePoint site should be ready to be surfaced as a grounding data. Now, how to add a knowledge source is first thing you need to provision a uh, Copilot. And once you provision a copilot, click on add knowledge, specify the SharePoint site name, and specify the knowledge description, uh, specify the website link. And once that is done, uh, it is uh, it should be ready uh, from a uh, link perspective. But then uh, what you need to do is like you need to go into the portal.azure.com, so Azure website, create an app registration. And then once you create an app registration, you need to provision a secret, you need to configure the redirect URI, uh, specify the API permissions, uh, and also you may need to expose an API, okay? Now, once you do all these things, uh, then you need to navigate to your bot or Copilot, and then click on authenticate manually instead of authenticate with Microsoft or no authentication, because you need to have some sort of an authentication token passed uh, in order to access SharePoint data because SharePoint is your intranet data and then you want it to be securely accessed, right? And once you fill up the client ID, client secret and configure the scopes, then I think uh, you should be ready to uh, deploy. Now, okay, so let's jump into the demo. We will come back to the setting uh, in a while, but let's jump into the demo. So uh, what, I can, what I'll do is like, uh, I've already provisioned a bot called as July 1 Copilot, okay? Now this Copilot, uh, which I have provisioned, it uh, I haven't added any grounding data. So if I uh, chat with the Copilot, which I've already created, what I'll do, I'll just type in some information. So so I'll type in some information like, can I get information about Copilot adoption? Okay, so let's see what uh, it responds. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna check for an internal topic first. And then once it uh, is not able to find anything to the internet, uh, internal topic, then it will uh, start looking into the internet, right? So this is a general basic uh, information which I found uh, in the in internet. Now, if you see over here, it says AI generated content may be incorrect and this information is surfaced with Azure OpenAI. Okay, now this has gone into the internet and grabbed this information. But what I want is like, I want the information to be um, uh, truthfully correct. And also I will make use of SharePoint because I know SharePoint holds a single source of truth of documentation. Now, if you navigate to your SharePoint, so it's, let's assume this is your SharePoint directory. And if you have your specific document library, what you can do, you can specify the, what document you want to point to. Now, I've already downloaded one document like Copilot for Microsoft 365 Adoption Playbook, Copilot Microsoft 365. So I have a couple of uh, Copilot related documentation. So what I'm going to do, I'll just copy this uh, URL uh, and then I'll upload files. And let me upload all these four documents. Okay. Now, 
I'm uploading this four documents in the SharePoint site. Now, once this document is uploaded, so there are five uh, items over here. Now, this is how you basically upload a document in SharePoint. Now, in your case, you, uh, you might already be having the SharePoint document. Uh, so what you need to do is like against your copilot, you need to do some settings. Okay, if you click on settings over here, and if you go to security, then you should be able to set the authentication now from an authentication perspective don't set it to no authentication or authenticate with microsoft you need to set it authenticate manually okay now here there are a couple of information which will come handy so one is redirect url this is important and then client id client secret which you need to fill in and the scope you may need to add a couple of scope okay now if we get all this three information then our authentication information should be complete and all the information when you type in the uh, prompt then all this information should be passed on by uh, the sharepoint rather than the bot looking into the internet and grabbing those information okay so in order to test that what we will do first we need to configure so we need to go to portal.azure.com and then from here let's go to app registration so on the left menu, you should be able to find app registration. And if you do not find this, then what you can do, you can start typing over here, okay? And just type app registration. Once you see app registration, you need to click on new registration and you need to register an application. So let's call this application as, as today's 5th of July. Let me type in 5 July 2024, Scopilot Studio CPS SharePoint okay so this is just my convention okay and this time i'll pick up accounts in any organization directory any microsoft enter id multi-tenant okay i'll click on register now this is we are creating an app registration now we need to link this app registration right so on the left hand side here you will see something called as a client id now this is an important piece of information i'll just copy the client id and i'll go into here and i'll paste it okay so this is the first step then what we can do we can create an app secret okay so if i go to certificates and secret i need to create a client secret i'll just create a client secret and i'll put some description i'll say sp cps secret and i'm not worried about the expiry period it can be any whatever you prefer i'll just keep it default and then i got the value so i'll just copy this value of the secret and i'll paste this over here now this is uh, good as of now so what we have done we have copied the client id and we have copied the client secret now next step what you need to do you need to set up some values okay now wow how you'll set up some values you need to go into authentication and then from authentication you need to add a platform and the platform is web okay and it will ask you for redirect URI. Now the U redirect URI, it is handy over here. So you can copy this redirect URL and then you can paste it over here. Select access token ID tokens and configure, okay? So you have added a platform and you have uh, selected a web and then you have copied the redirect URI. Now, uh, what you need to do next is you need to uh, add a permission. Okay, so API permission. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add an API permission. Now from an API permission perspective, we will make use of graph. So using graph, we are going to use, uh, you, we are going to point to the SharePoint data source. So let's click on delegated permission. And then from here, what you need to do, you need to select a couple of things, okay? If you just scroll here, you will see open ID and profile, okay? Now, if you see this uh, screen over here, profile and open ID is a couple of scope. Then what we will do, we will uh, add a couple of more things okay so if i just type in files okay so if you see files files dot read dot all so we'll select this and there is an another component sites sites dot read dot all okay so open id profile files dot read dot all sites dot read dot all okay let's add all these things okay now we have added open id profile sites dot read dot all user.read, files.read. Now, once you've done with this, just grant an admin consent, okay? So I'll just click on grant admin consent. Now, all good. Next step, what you need to do, you need to expose an API. Now, here, you need to click on add scope, okay? 
so once you add a scope here you have this application id uri okay i'll just copy this application id uri and click on save and continue okay now from a scope name perspective let's call this as test.read okay test.read and i'll select admin and users and i'll put uh, admin consent display name as again as test.read and i'll just put test.read description okay uh, here you can fill the consent description according to uh, your organization's policy uh, i'll just keep it default i'll just click on add scope now we have configured the api we have configured the api permissions uh, certificates and secrets everything is good now the couple of things last thing we need to add over here is one is we have added a couple of scopes so that is sites dot read all and we have added files dot read all once we add the scope everything is good you just click on save now it will tell you save this configuration it is based on authentication so that means authentication variables will come into picture and uh, it, it will start saving this information okay now once it starts saving information it will establish a connection with the sharepoint in the back end because you have provided the sharepoint url link okay so now we have done all this thing but which data source are we pointing to that we haven't mentioned right now for that what we need to do is we need to go into knowledge okay and here against that copilot click on add knowledge and add sharepoint and onedrive okay and go to your sharepoint site and just copy till the site name okay so this is still uad slash uh, site slash uad sharepoint so i'll select the sharepoint site name i'll click on add okay and this is i'll just call it this is a uad sharepoint site and this is what i want the knowledge source to come from i'll click on add so what we have done we have added a sharepoint site as a knowledge source we have already configured the authentication information we have created an app registration we have configured it correctly and then this uh, entire uh, configuration will then be published so last step is to publish this information so uh, what i'm going to do i'll just publish this information so i think uh, i'm good with it so once it is published you, you may need to give it some time for the information to populate okay now the what what things we have in the documentation is there are a couple of copilot related documentation related to adoption m365 user enablement modern work copilot now what i want is like if user types in any query related to this particular documentation then it should the information should come from this document source rather than coming from a generic internet okay so let's try that out it may not come in first instance but let's try and see so if i'm just typing uh, hello it'll give me a prompt uh, it will say hello how can i help you today i'll say get information about user adoption copilot now it says hello to be able to help you i'll need you to sign in okay so what i'm going to do it says to continue please log in so now as you see over here it has taken me to a specific url https token.botframework.com and it has given me a code now what i'm going to do i'm going to copy this code so i'll just click on copy and the code will be copied to my clipboard and now i'll go into the chat and i will just paste this code now once you paste this code it will uh, authenticate yourself and then from this point onwards you can start asking for information okay so in this case i'm going to ask for information like uh, uh, how to use or just maybe i'll just say uh, give me information about copilot adoption so if all the conf connections are configured correctly then it should populate this information from the sharepoint document library rather than giving this information from the generic internet so let's see whether this bot processes this information or not now if you see here this is uh, this has given me this response copilot for microsoft is designed to drive ai adoption and all these things 
and what it has done it has given me a link now what is this link if i just hover the mouse over here and if i click on it then it is taking me to the actual sharepoint site so that means this information is coming from the actual sharepoint site right so that means we have successfully established that connection now we can also talk about uh, ask about modern work and user enablement so let me ask about user enablement copilot now if the copilot is able to find the information uh, from the sharepoint document library then uh, it should be able to surface the user enablement pdf document now it might take a couple of tries and couple of publishes okay uh, because sometimes the information is not uh, given correctly but in my case it has correctly pointed to the user enablement copilot.pdf which is like if i click over here it is again coming from the sharepoint and it has given uh, this documentation right so this is how you basically uh, connect your uh, copilot with a sharepoint based data source now if you closely watch what has happened in, during this conversation the prompt which i have typed gave me information about copilot adoption what it has done it has first gone into the topic and checked whether is there any topic related to this it didn't find the topic then what it did is like okay now i'm not able to find the information then the topic which will get triggered is a conversational boosting now this is an this is a trigger of on unknown intent and from here uh, a message of create generative answers will be triggered now from here here you will find that there are like data sources so first preference would be given to all the knowledge data sources which you have connected to this copilot but in my case i have connected it to a specific sharepoint site and that sharepoint site is configured using uh, app registration now once the authentication is done like as you saw over here it has asked for an authentication now it has prompted me uh, uh, and then once I clicked on it, it has uh, opened uh, a URL basically. Now that URL is basically, which I'll show you over here. This is something like an authentication. So it will give you some code. You copy the code. And then once the code is copied, it will authenticate. Now it doesn't give you any information like whether you're authenticated or not, but then uh, we can safely assume that it is authenticated. And now it is giving me proper information about all the documentation uh, which is available in the SharePoint site. So rather than extracting information from the generic internet, now I have grounded the data and I have asked for some specific information, right? So this is how you basically use um, a knowledge source of SharePoint to integrate with your Copilot Studio. Thanks for watching.